So let us look at the first slide. And all these are based on my 25 years of coaching and mentoring in different countries about stakeholder relationship management. So some more than 10 years ago, when PMI introduced this in the sixth edition of the pinball, but when it was in the fifth edition, I uh, discovered that most of my uh, junior project managers, they are quite <laughs> unaware of the importance of stakeholder relationship management. So I said, okay, I will uh, develop a course and initially it was in-house. Then eventually uh, I do my training with some uh, organizations, then it is offered uh, to externally. Huh? Okay, so the best way to learn any topic I believe is to study the history. Because when you study the history, then you actually realize the importance of uh, why this topic has been introduced. So uh, to keep within the 30 minutes, I would like to focus on three uh, key areas. The first uh, area, of course, to understand the history that's the display in the continuum of stakeholder relationship management. And what we should know, two items we should know. So this is my process flow that uh, must know is one, should know is two, good, uh, need to know is three. So it makes up of uh, six boxes. So there are three types of stakeholder. Most of us uh, uh, know this, but there are also uh, six uh, characters or traits of uh, stakeholders that we have to uh, adjust in order that we can uh, cushion and uh, create a win-win situation. And the third one is uh, knowingly or unknowingly. I still remember uh, one of the German professor, I was presenting it, uh, presenting it uh, in, at Cambridge and he says, I've been doing this research for many years. You have put it into very simple, a Venn diagram. So I became a good friend of him and yesterday I was very, very uh, honoured to publish an article with him in the European Journal of Management, uh, which is about not stakeholder theory, but project-based accelerated action learning. And the next one is the 10 axioms. So when I uh, actually uh, put down, because normally people ask you, so uh, teacher or KC, what have you learned? I said, let me do some self-reflection over the last 12, 40 years, I was the project manager in my first job because uh, when I was recruited by a British company, they sent me back from UK to Singapore and asked my boss, John Wilson, what is the project manager? That is in 1981, 40 years ago. His answer is very clear because he's graduate from Cambridge. He said, Casey, anything we don't do, you do. It's called project manager. I said, wow, that is a very, <laughs> very versatile very agile definition. So I said, okay, fine. So this is what I want to share with you. Actually, there are more than 10, but these 10 are uh, what we call the common sense and common sense are not very common, including my own staff. So sometimes you have to uh, <laughs> explain to them, then they can understand. Uh. And finally, uh, I think because uh, I just finished my agile exam, same thing, when your uh, subordinate or your peers, they are all certified agile. Then they will tease me and say, Casey, you're the boss, you know, are you certified yet? I said, must I get certified? I said, of course. Otherwise, you don't, uh, uh, you're unable to meet the minimum standard. So I said, fine, because I work for the consulting uh, industry. So I said, okay, I go and get my certification. Then I realized in, in Agile, we talk about business value. So therefore, I want to change a little bit internally. So hopefully it's externally also accepted uh, the term uh, stakeholder value or value management. No? Okay, so now let's take a look. In the 1950s and 1960s, because I'm not young, I'm 66 years old, but I have bosses who are from Harvard, from Cambridge, etc. So they told me, actually we study uh, office politics no? In uh, uh, at Harvard Business School. Myself, I graduated from Cranfield. If people say my Cranfield, they don't, they don't know where because it's inside a farm. But if I told them it's between Oxford and Cambridge, that's Cranfield. 
they can understand. Not because the university is famous, because they know where is Oxford, where is Cambridge. I say you draw a straight line in the middle, it's the farm. It's a farm, actually it's a farm. So therefore, my professor, this book I still have it because we have to pass this exam. It's called Politics of Management. So there are three phases and this is until today, uh, it, still work, it still works out. It's called the 369 principle. Now, I went through a, a lot of research because I want to change the name. Uh, it's quite glaring when you tell people I am going to give a, a topic on uh, management of politics. They say, uh, sorry, I think this is not what we want. Thank you. Uh, next speaker, please. Uh. So therefore, it was also changed to organizational uh, politics. But I think PMI did a lot of good work because uh, one of the uh, professors from uh, Australia, she did her research on stakeholder management. And in actual fact, it's a PMI publication. So from there, I say, okay, I think this is really a very neutral work and very important for us to know more. Now, this is the very famous Daniel Grobman. And if you do your agile, you must also study. And uh, I'm not as hardworking because I'm lazy people. Normally, they work wisely, not smartly. Why? Make the smart guy work. You, all the mistakes he make, you don't follow. You do otherwise. So therefore, the one who survives is the wise guy, not the smart guy. So this is what I'm going to explain the talk about stakeholder relationship management. So this is the model which I uh, adopted it into my own model, which is the total solution and much more easier to understand. Huh? So uh, if you want to analyze anything, so I'm a control and systems engineer. This is why I uh, completed my first degree. So we always start from the output. Output means what is the end game. So the output is that whether we are nice person or good person, <laughs> people tell us not what we think. So if I walk around my office and say, what do you think of me? In front of you, they say, you are a nice guy. Nice guy means the one who always buy lunch. Because you are the boss who buy lunch. The good guy, when I ask my wife, is different. They say, I married the good guy, I don't marry the nice guy. So I ask my wife, that means you marry me, the good guy. I say, of course, of course. So luckily, there's still one person who says that I'm a good guy. But all my colleagues tell me, you are the nice guy off because they expect me to buy lunch. Off. So social awareness is very important. What people think of you, not what you think of <laughs> yourself. is people tell you what I think of you. The next one, of course, if you want to control your output, you must actually take care of the input like quality control. If the raw materials are lousy, output many defects. So we have to look at our self-awareness, self-confidence. Of course, it's not as simple as that. Uh, in my own uh, uh, company, we have uh, five tests. That means before you join my company, we give you five profiling tests. And then we, we are not interested about whether you are highly qualified or you are not so qualified. We are looking at attitude. So can you fit into our culture? If that doesn't fit the culture, how smart also no use. Huh? So therefore, the quality control is about, uh, we call this ACE. A stands for attitude, commitment, and empathy. Empathy. Huh? Now, before we talk about the middle box, which is transformation processing, this is what digital transformation has done. Uh, we must look at self-control. Self-control is like what PMI says, our five process group, monitor and control. Monitor people, control processes. Self-control means that if every year when I ask my colleague and <laughs> say, are you going for training? He said, what for? I know everything already. Uh, the one is finished already. If the one who says that this is my whole laundry list, but I know company cannot send me. In the course of my work, my clients give me a lot of problems in this particular area, let's say human resources. So I want to attend uh, those pragmatic courses. Fine, how much is the budget? So you look around to cut those stories short. So let HR do the job. And then when this person comes back, he has to train the rest. So in this case, it's cheaper because one person go for the course, come back, train the rest. Oh. So this is called self-control, lifelong learning. Oh, myself also this year, I'm very lucky because I'm not, not much consulting job, consulting C job to do because I have to travel to Indonesia. That's my main market. Oh. So they told me don't come oh, because you come, you cannot go back. Oh. 
Those in Malaysia you enter cannot come back anymore. So I say, okay, let's do Zoom. He says Zoom not effective. So you hold one year. When it's open next year, you come. So I have time to do four courses. The Jar courses plus one more, which I think just now uh, the gentleman before me talked about strategy implementation. Oh. And this one is from Antonio, the former PMI president. Oh. Okay. So once we get this, this is the six processes, which is about transforming ourselves from less stakeholder relationship management to become more concerned about stakeholder relationship management. So one by one, I will go through so I don't need to go through uh, each individual box. This one we know. This is very common sense. There are three types of stakeholders in any environment. Actually, there are four types, but uh, three types is good enough already. Uh, positive, proactive. When you didn't ask them, they come and ask you. So, Casey, are you okay with your project? If you need help, my door is always open to you. No? Next one is reactive. Call me if you need me. Because this guy, he's prayed full already. So he said, if you need me, you call me, I will help you. The next one is before you start the project, he said, sure, die one. Why? The customer very tough, you know. The customer never pay one. Then I said, I already agreed to take all this project. Now you tell me, he said, that's why I was hinting to you, but you didn't get my hint. It's okay. We are not talking about praying what we always have a misconception politics. We are talking about changing people attitude. Changing people attitude. Because uh, I still remember there's a wise guy. Uh, of course, he's no longer with us. Uh, our first PM. He says that if you are above 41 years old, cannot change already. Uh, and recently also uh, went for the neuro uh, plastic city, which is the jar course. They say that above 21 your intelligence facts already. No wonder I have to work very hard because my intelligence is already confirmed at the age of 21. Also now, I really believe in lifelong learning because everything I learn, I forget. So how to motivate myself to remember? So I make things very simple, but which I call logical sequence. Logical sequence. Uh, this one is only five. Actually, there are some books say eight, some books say nine, but doesn't matter. Let us just look at, does it fit into our environment? No? We know there are people who backstab with us. This is normal. Otherwise, it's not called human being, right? Sure have one. <laughs> Whatever you say, the guy go back and say, Casey, bad mouth you, no? <laughs> I, I ask myself, what have I done wrong? But maybe that's, uh, I don't know, human nature. Huh? Next one is the boot liquor. Of course, I still remember. I have... Colleagues in front of CEO says that, uh, Mr. CEO, I am also 100% agree with you. But actually behind the scene, he said he doesn't agree with the CEO. But how come in front of CEO, he said 100%, 100% means also I have to agree. Oh, so all this you can find. That's why it's interesting in life, right? How to influence and change people. Attitude. Oh. The bullier. Always use words like what the CEO says. How come CEO says don't need to can talk, tell me directly? How come must pass through you? But he always say, I just finished my meeting with CEO. The CEO says, but do you think you dare to call the CEO and ask? Do you say this? No, right? So he said, never mind. I will do as what because I trust you. Right? I will do whatever you tell me. The gossiper. So please remember, don't associate with people when the top management already don't have a good impression. So when you join the people for lunch or dinner, they will believe that you are part of the gang. This is very natural because sometimes I have my own boss told me, Casey, if possible, don't go out with this group of people because they are not in the good books. So you have to retrieve all. Okay. That is, the CEO is a good person, right? Not the nice person, no? The stacker. So, of course, when you come back after holidays, no, or after overseas assignment, wow, your paper full of things, though. How come? <laughs> they say that because you are responsible, right? You must be accountable, no? So, okay, never mind. But uh, one day, this person has to pay the price because they come back, his table is gone, not even full of things because already fired, no? 
the silent one. So these are the people which we call uh, the smiling tiger. They can be very supportive of you and not so supportive of you. So uh, you have to watch the body language, the body language. Huh? And this is not the exhaustive list. This is not uh, all the list I could uh, cover, but this is what I myself have experienced. Huh? So now this is the next thing that we have to remember. There are third culture in every organization, except if you work in a country that is communist. Because communist is equal for all. As example, the first culture is called national culture. I'm a Singaporean, I go to Indonesia. So what do you think? I must adjust myself to the Indonesian culture. So the professional culture is that I'm a project manager. So I have uh, four values, honesty, fairness, uh, respect and responsibility. But which one is most important to me? Respect, because it's a Muslim country. I must understand that every day they go for the sambayang, which is the prayer. You cannot tell uh, your staff, they say cannot go, no? So Friday, we have to update all the projects report. So at first, the union talked to me and said, how come your department have all the non-Muslim in my PMO? I said, I'm very sorry I have to explain to you that 12 to 2 is the time we update all this report. 5 o'clock, we have to analyze together with those senior management and see what we want to do. That's when you use a, a job, right? On Monday. So therefore, they now can understand why is <laughs> the non-Muslim who are there because they have to work from 12 to 2 o'clock. Because the Muslim, they are entitled to go for their prayer. So the same thing I have to uh, do in Singapore because if on a Friday, I will ask actually who are the Muslim and these are the colleagues that has uh, the time off to do their prayer. Huh? So all these are very important. That's the professional culture. But myself, first job, I worked three years, British company. But next job, Japanese. The first year, somebody asked me, Casey, how come your hair is so short? I said, I feel like telling all my hair. No? You deal with Japanese, everything is detailed planning. You want to do anything, write to report first. I said, Neither is endless, but I have no choice because this is the company I love and I was fighting very hard to join them, which is in the high-tech business also. Therefore, after 10 years in the Japanese company, so I become very, uh, like what we said, lean management. I joined the Canadian company. My Canadian boss don't like me. He said, everything you have to discuss with your people, even though I was in Canada, he says, we are... We engage you because you must make the decision by yourself. You cannot call back Singapore and discuss. So this is what the organization culture dictates. Now I move to McKinsey. Now very different again. So luckily McKinsey put me eight years in Indonesia. So therefore I start to begin to understand the, uh, the Indonesian McKinsey culture because the country manager there has been there for quite some time. So, we add all this up into an organization. That's why to change the culture of an organization is not an easy task. You must put down all the challenges, then together you change. Huh? And the good news is that if you have a PMO, it's easier. Don't have PMO, it's even harder. And the PMO, someone remember what I said in the conference, and he, she wrote to me and says that, if you don't report to the CEO, it's called a joke. If you are the head of the PMO, because nothing gets done. You must report to the CEO. And just like Steve Jobs, the late Steve Jobs, whenever there's problem, he will appear. So, so let's move into the 10 axioms. Oh. The first one is that uh, you can tell me at the end, I don't agree, but uh, let me finish everything off. Oh. Don't be number two. Don't be number one. Always be number two because the number one is the smart guy. Number two is the wise guy. Oh, so look at who get the Nobel Peace Prize. Al Gore. Bill Clinton has a lot of issues. A lot of issues oh, because he's number one. Oh, everyone attract to the number one. Nobody attracts to number two. But who keeps the job? Number two. Support those who are in power. So I have a friend who says that I'm so loyal to my ex-boss. 
I will resign and join him. I said, but he is not going to another company that's bigger than the current one. He's going to a small company. If you join him, the future is gone. So if you know that the new boss is Mr. Satya in this example, then you say that I support our former boss, which is uh, Steve Bobber. You're in trouble because he's into uh, supporting those uh, playing the softballs, right? So that's where he, his interest is. Uh. So uh, swing with the wind. For a good reason, not for a bad reason, not for general reason. It's not who you know. Everybody says, I know this very important person. I know that very important person. In front of that very important person, did the guy even say, Hello, Casey, how are you? So I went to a HP alumni uh, beginning of this year. Mr. Ko Boon Hui, the first MD of uh, HP, former chairman of SIA, former chairman of DBS Bank, former NTU, the chairman. He saw me, I was coming up from the biological uh, lab. No, biological lab means toilet. Huh? He told me, Casey, how are you? He said, the day when we travel first class, you don't even say hello to me, you know? So I said, wow, your memory very good, huh? And he said, let's take the photograph. Because my wife uh, tell me that he is, not I am arrogant, he is arrogant. So you go back to the wife, huh? The same thing when I was at uh, Oxford in one of my graduation. This top professor, he owned four castles in Scotland. He came and called me and said, do you know you won the best doctorate award for the year? I said, never mind. I just want to finish and then I go to the pub and drink to my heart's content. He said, okay. Use words that are music to your uh, boss's ears or people whom like to hear and then they will support you. Example, your CFO going to uh, sign the check for you to change your new car. No? So, now you look at this gentleman, stand the one, you're fired. You know, come up from the mouth, right? Look at this lady. People have to pay her $4 million for one talk show. It's not small amount. Huh? And look at what she said. Turn your wounds into wisdom. Very nice. Music to my ears. Of course, uh, Mr. Obama, uh, he is another uh, something that we can learn, but sometimes a bit too long. Nothing to say he's good or no good, but I think uh, short words, much better. Huh? Now, this is the uh, report from NT, uh, Learning, NTUC Learning Hub, and I take it very, very uh, important as a uh, guidance that effective communication is actually the root of all problems, huh? including stakeholder relationship management. So that is the reason why uh, I believe that starting from now, I use uh, 4S, make my speech, make my sentences simple, short, sweet, and sharp. And of course, the last one is must be suitable, or suitable. And someone told me suitable also no use, must have substance. Otherwise, no substance also no use. Or. So I said, okay, I take it by heart. And design thinking and lean principles, all this fit into our agile. And this is without uh, NTUC Learning Hub uh, actually ask people what you think about agile uh, project management or, or discipline agile. Now, the other thing is definitely, I think uh, I was teaching yesterday, so I did not have the luxury to attend uh, the conference here. And uh, project management is. Uh, becoming more and more important, but not any project management. I think the speaker already mentioned specific to industry. So somebody asked me uh, recently and said, since you are control and system engineer, we want to talk about project management in the aerospace industry. I said, this is what I'm interested in. After all these years, I'm working in the aerospace industry. That means uh, my machines are producing aircraft parts. So I said, I'll be very interested to look into that. Oh. This is what we learned oh, uh, from our pinball that uh, anybody will only pay attention to uh, 
a few percentages of uh, the words that is dis uh, displayed and we have to speak eloquently because uh, people listen to uh, our intonation. Like myself, I cannot see very clearly. You ask me, all these are just pictures. I cannot even see the words, but I can remember each picture, what does it say? So, But body language is very important. What happened? I talked to you like that. Cool. I think before you start, I said, I think this guy is what come from Hazel. You know, Hazel, is he a try or what? There are some people talk like that, no? In your office, can because they're the boss. Outside, please don't talk like that. Maybe no? <laughs> people start walking out of the room already. Oh, okay. All these are minor, minor points, but this is part of stakeholder relationship management. The next one is, of course, our uh, why not talk. Huh? And also, as I said, uh, you learn from uh, Mandela. And also, uh, don't only know yourself. If I ask you, out of this group of people, how many you truly know them, their background? If your answer is don't know, then you have a problem. How many of us know this gentleman? If you don't know this gentleman, you talk to him, it's just a waste of time. He is the man without any expression. Whether he's happy or not happy, cannot show one. So you must understand behind the scene. Oh, he likes and he dislikes. So as such, uh, so as I said, the next one is uh, be agile. Oh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, anything senior management don't do, you do because this is the right attitude. Uh, if it is for good purpose or not for a wrong purpose. And this is again, uh, the sample here. And timing is everything. I think just now the speaker also said the same. So that's why uh, we did not collide or collaborate and say, you said, and then I said. But actually, to me, timing is everything. Or in my uh, whatever I do. And this is the gentleman. Uh, some 20 years ago, people say it must be a nut to talk about electric cars. But I said, never mind. I continue. Huh? And this is where I want to change the words of Steve Jobs. I don't need to ask his permission because it's finished. Huh? But at least I show here whether you all agree or not. That stay hungry, but stay agile. Stay agile. This is uh, my new uh, tagline. Never give up. Who says that? Of course, our friend. I also have another of my... Uh, colleagues who says I don't like this guy, I say never mind. I know you don't like him, but what I learned from him when I listened to his four speeches when he received his honorary doctorate is true. In my own encounter, never give up because after all the adversity, here come the as we said, when the rain is over, the rainbow, huh? the rainbow. So this is what we say: sustainable leadership and. If these two gentlemen just focus on women relationship as the main team, everything will work out. No? But if don't, then we have a big issue. So I use these six A's and convert into very simple uh, expectations uh, guideline. So it's all about meeting expectations. All about meeting expectations. No? And almost finished already. No? So because we want to change and influence other people, we ourselves must change first. So, what I learned is that if I don't change the way I think, then I will not change the way I work. So, the first thing is like what the neuroplasticity says <laughs> my intelligence already confirmed at 21 years old. So, therefore, now I must change my process of thinking. So, everything I do, because I like the, the project management methodology, the logical sequence. And also agile is very strong, just you turn, change again. Huh? So then now we can change the way we work. When we change the way we work, people observe us and say, this guy has changed. So therefore, our behavior is, you don't need to quantify it, but your behavior shows that you are more concerned. You don't use so arrogant or aggressive or abrasive words. And of course, everybody will start to say, I think he can be a good leader and he's actually uh, displaying the adaptive leadership. Ball. The five whys is always there to uh, qualify or quantify. No, to qualify, qualify. Uh, quantify is uh, to behavior. Uh, why stakeholder relationship management is so important. But then towards the end, you realize that 
The reason why two person is together, because of value, value systems, value in terms of organization values, values in terms of business values, oh, which will bring me to the last slide already. So I reorganize into a very simple diagram, which I share with my colleagues. The first thing you must know is what you want to be, where I want to excel. This is where you will discuss with your boss, discuss with the HR, and then are you able to reach there? Huh? So your self-development and this one, if the company wants to take care of you, you are a talent in the company, we will develop and nurture you. Huh? Because of output, we must look at the input. Self-awareness. Do I have profiling tests to confirm? Do I know myself? Every one of us wants to be like Bill Gates. Of course, he's a great person. He wants to be uh, the late uh, Jack Welch. But we can never be Bill Gates. We can never be Jack Welch. We can never be Steve Jobs. Because they are individual characteristics. We must first understand ourselves. Them only, we go to the green box. What I know, if there are a lot of gaps in our knowledge, then be honest and fill up those gaps. Be honest and fill up those gaps. Oh. And then now, what I do is what you get paid. Because what value it brings to the company. In a recent job, uh, consulting job in Singapore, it's very difficult to hunt. And I think my uh, assistant, my PA is there. She's doing her doctorate degree. Oh. She's very shy. And... She now have two masters because when she was listening to my uh, lecture, I also uh, teach part-time. So she says, actually, I apply what you learn. I got promoted, you know. You asked her if you got promoted. I said, so fast. I said, yeah, because I changed my attitude. After you hit all the pain points, I said like that, do you, you want to do a doctor? I said, uh, if you're my supervisor, can I said, normally I don't supervise because I'm too old already. It's very taxing on me. So I said, I, you will become my successor in this uh, company that I will retire after when I'm 70 years old. Okay. So this is where I see value in both sides. All these PowerPoint sets are done by her. She has a main job. This is her part-time, you know, that she do it because she really wants to learn from me. You know, and that is the ace. So I am worried that when I finish the talk, somebody put up the hand and say, hey, Casey, this team is about WUKA, but how come I never mentioned anything about WUKA? So I want to stop here because at least I have 10 minutes of your time to ask me questions. But if you particularly want to know WUKA, uh, I have the slides prepared with you. Otherwise, the slides go to closing thoughts. The latest James Bond movie, which I missed again, is No Time to Die, right? And my reminder always, in what I learned over my journey in life, don't make assumptions. Although in the pinball got assumption, which things to take for granted, but in today's <laughs> the COVID pandemic tell us don't make assumptions. Huh? Everybody looks okay, but we go home and say, well, I got contacted, of course, touch with the uh, COVID when I'm in this room. Huh? So assumptions actually are risk. Don't make assumptions. Hypothesis is different. Hypothesis means that I yet to prove. Huh? So I go backwards. I will take the question, huh? take the question uh, from the floor. Huh? Okay. Who is the one who orchestra the question? Huh? Uh, just now I was told somebody will be correcting the question and ask me. Yeah, we have a uh, question here at the Crowd Compass for you. Uh, the first question we have is, how about the sufferer as a stakeholder? This is the slacker who also keeps quiet and then has 15 excuses for not taking action and later gets into more and more pain if you call them out. I read a book about this guy. How do you feel about him? Okay, so to answer uh, this question and other questions related to uh, organizational politics, my own advice to myself is, if the path is straight, don't take sideways. You know what I'm trying to say? One day, when I went to KL, so this is a longer way to go back to my hotel. So I told my colleague, I walked this way, I said, Hey, Casey, 
why you always are afraid that something will happen to you? I said, it's not I'm afraid because I am a person that don't make assumptions. So this is very bright, the road. Nobody will, what do you call that? They come up with a pen knife or come up with a knife. And uh, what do you call the English word? Huh? Huh? Yeah. Uh, mark me, mark her, mark. And true enough, I went the longer way and these three of them got marked. They went back to hotel in underwear. That case is not ladies. Uh. I told them, I told you already. Uh. So, therefore, whether the bootlicker or all this, I always believe that do what you think is best, not for yourself, for the company, Everything will take place myself because uh, I make my own mistakes. I worked 10 years in the Japanese company and I knew a lot of people don't like me because I'm non-Japanese and I'm holding the, in, in, in uh, Southeast Asia or ASEAN, I'm the country manager, the group, group uh, country manager. So all the GMs, including Japanese, report to me. Always they backstab me. Don't care. You just show results. My turn over revenue a year, $400 million. And all these other stuff report to me. You are think you can make it. We split it into two. You show to the big boss that you can handle. I show to them that without your help, because they are in the technical department, I will also be able to, I use local for technical uh, analysis. I still hit it. And then it's the same in later years that for other jobs. So I always believe that if you have the organization interest in your hand, at the end of the day, the top management will know that you're not doing it for yourself. And the best thing is, even though I'm out of the Indonesian company, now I'm still the trusted advisor. That means I coach and mentor people behind the scene. That means the big boss from Indonesia will tell me these are the three person I want you to uh, develop and nurture them. Nobody should know. Then this is the amount I will pay you. So nobody knows. But actually, I'm doing all this uh, thing behind the scene. Huh? I think I answer the question. Huh? So you will take care by yourself. And be patient. Huh? So be hungry. Be agile. The one that I was not patient was the Japanese company. Be patient. Because after I put in my resignation, the guy who stabbed me the most got fired. Not because of my resignation, because they wanted to fire him. Now, once I put in the resignation, I cannot draw it back. No, because he went up to the president already. It's a loser face. If they took back, they give him back the letter. So therefore, loyalty counts. The loyalty counts, especially if you work for big corporations. Okay, next question. Okay, the next question is, do you encounter situations where by your stakeholders do not normally want to see your project success in their mind? Oh. If so, what, what do you do normally? Okay, uh, this one is uh, half joke, half serious. Oh. What do I mean by that? When I go to the... Some of you likes to go clubbing, right? Yeah, so you go to some of these. Clubbing, not 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 those that is in the newspaper one, uh, the very high end one, uh, and where CEOs visit or C suite people visit, uh, the club like the Island Country Club, uh, those days of Pine Tree Club, etc. Uh, and US club, if you have, uh, you can see some of these uh, CIO, they are down there, and do you know what they talk about? They say, hey, if there's no problem, uh, we will lose our job. No, I was very surprised because I was having wine with them and they are talking. They say, that's why we have to create some problem. Make sure some of the projects fear, but not the big ones, the small ones. So please, if you believe what I told you, everyone is honest. So your project fear, don't give up. Back to our uh, Jack Ma, huh? because I am not joking. One of my job in the past in Indonesia is that my boss told me, the one who survived will be promoted. So I always take all those people who are due for promotion as my punching bag, you know. So I want to test how many kg can this person stand. The minute this person give up, you will never get the C-suite job. 
C suite means chief operating officer, or of course cannot be CEO because the guy is a CEO. And I am doing all this behind the scenes. So sometimes when you are in a very difficult position, you just tell the person, I did my best. If the company wants to fire me, I think I also have to respect that. But no need to say, oh, this guy, that guy, that is called gossip again. Huh? Focus, focus, focus. That's why why Agile is very good. Right? Agile talk about processes. Talk about if the process doesn't work, so the whole team discuss again and improve straight away using your spring or using your iteration or using your retrospective rather than, oh, it's Casey who is the one or it's Bernard who is the one or it is uh, Michael who is the one. Once you start pointing fingers, which is one of the principles of Jai, right? people will back up because people say this is not the right company. Huh? So I think things have changed to a so much during the COVID pandemic that we become uh, much more accommodating because <laughs> we cannot see each other so frequent. And communication is actually most important because we must communicate to connect. We must be able to touch the heart and the mind of the person that actually you care. Rather than uh, we come up with solutions, but who to implement are important. That's why I think PMI also knew successful implementation. I learned from Japanese means this two legs, uh, not here. The two legs go there and get it done. So that's why I don't want to be in the Zoom. I want to come here physically so I can know each one of you and see each one of you. Of course, do a Zoom is much better, right? Uh, just uh, uh, 45 minutes and then bye bye. Okay. But I come out today because I really, a long time didn't come out. I want to use my leg exercise also huh? and meet the lovely people like yourself. Huh? Any question? Time for one more question here. Sure. Um, so the question is, in a meeting, if you have about 90% of your stakeholders not contributing their views, what can you do to make the meeting more fruitful? Ah, very important. This goes back to... Before every meeting, it's the same I always say to myself, to other people. Nobody prepare for the meeting. So if you are the leader, you cannot... Uh, this is only six box, but normally I come up with the nine box solution. So all the information, you put it into the nine boxes. But this is six box because it's good enough. Yeah. So awareness, what is the purpose of this meeting? What is the purpose? Then alignment, why we need this meeting? Why is it physical and not Zoom? Oh. Next one is action. Do we have process owner? If don't have, that's why, that's why the meeting is there. And now each one of us decide and then we will honor or be disciplined enough to carry out those processes. Next one, adoption. Of course, there is no such thing that the buy-in is immediately. First time you do it, maybe 90% unprepared, now become 80% uh, unprepared, become 70%. Try, 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 try. So in project management, I always say the same thing. Two jobs is the toughest in the world. First job, sales. It's like begging the guy to sign the order, you know, although he says he wants to buy from you. To close the order is the ultimate It's not that the customer said he will order from us. Where is the order? Even the order is there also no use. Where is the deposit? Even the deposit is there. Can he complete the finance of your machine or for the project? Don't know. That means it's not total solution. That's so back to what I said. You must provide the total solution and then what do you think top management will say? This is the guy that we want to develop and nurture so that, again, just now the gentleman talked about the pipeline of leaders, the pipeline of managers, competent managers, the pipeline of effective leaders and the pipeline of agile entrepreneurs. It is hard work, but whether you want to do it, or someone else will do it. If you do it, the likelihood is that you may not be the CEO today. Ten years down the road, you could be a CEO. You know? <clears throat> so assurance is that when this thing is going to change. So your inference must be 
you are the key change agent. So all project managers are key change agent. So how to make people to change must be prepared. This doesn't come naturally, huh? And the last point, of course, is uh, <laughs> assumptions equals to risk. Don't make assumptions, it will work. Sometimes it doesn't work. So what do you do? You know Japanese samurai? They one long sword to fight the battle. The last one is take the knife out and harakiri. When you leave your job, you have done so much for the company, you know what happened. And I'm not joking, this one is not joking. So one of my, he was uh, my student, became my friend. He worked in IBM before. He was not promoted. He was very sore about this case. He worked for competitors. After 10 years, IBM called him back. Of course, his position promoted again. So now he left IBM again because changed bosses. New boss don't like him. And he went to Samsung. He went to uh, EMC2. So when the former boss became one of the senior management, call him back again because he has the right attitude. So I asked him, jumping where you know, I said, can you believe I go back to IBM again? After 20 years. So now his position is quite low. How do you know his position is good? Because he's driving a BM5 series. <laughs> Before he drive Toyota uh, Corolla or Dota or this, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say? And he, 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 he travelled with his boss uh, on uh, business of first class. Uh, so that is how you measure. Uh, that's the that's the new re remuneration, uh, okay? So I think there's a lot of uh, like uh, last time the guy was called Tony Robbins, uh, the giant within yourself. Uh, now we have to revisit the giant within each one of us. And I, I still believe that there's a very big future for project managers because we are toughened, you know. I always tell people, first thing must be very thick skin. There's sales and marketing. Second is like punching back, you know. Project managers got punch. Every day, you ask her, she got punch every day. <laughs> Therefore, I always ask her, when you get punched too much, you talk to me. Then I will explain to you uh, what I went through. Huh? Yeah. So, this is what is action learning about, which is also I introduced uh, uh, outside my company. So uh, I'm, yeah, I, I'm not trying to sell myself here. So this is where all the things you learn, if you don't uh, consolidate it into, from knowledge into expert power, when remain as knowledge power, it has no value at. But when this knowledge power turn into expert power it means there is a difference between A, B and C consulting company or A, B and C contractor. I will go for B because they actually not only have the experience but they can tell me what can when right, what will go wrong if I do it this way, then do it another way, another uh, risk that you're going to uh, enter. And this is what differentiates the very interesting concept of agile and non-agile. Because agile is a mindset. It's, if I don't take the exam, I, I wouldn't know. Oh, but uh, if I just read a book, I say, I think I know agile. But when you take the exam, you perspire, you get excited. Then you say, wow, well, I passed the exam because I go and revise. Why my uh, result is not so uh, high as I expected? Then there are many things you miss out. Oh. So the way to learn better is to teach. So now I teach agile to my colleagues. So day by day, I improve myself. When we come to Agile as a company's internal training, uh, then we can train our customer free. Because otherwise, if your customer don't think in tandem with you, the customer think one way, you think the other way, that is where it's also part of miscommunication. So communication cannot take as talking alone. It's how can I connect with you? I can connect with you because we go through a common language called Agile. We go through just now, I think the announced speaker talking about pinball, right? For the construction industry, not any industry, but for construction industry. So now we are aligned back to my six bosses. This is where I can move forward uh, at the right speed. Oh. And this is what learning is about. Transform ourselves from a old behavior to a positive new behavior. Thank you very much for that. Okay, so. <laughs>